So for this design, I created a little miniature version of what the final painting is going to be. And that can be really helpful when you're creating something that is out of your head and you don't have like specific exact reference that you're working from. To do a little miniature version ahead of time is helpful because you can have all the colors worked out ahead of time and it just makes everything go easier. So we're just going to sketch out the basic shape of the pumpkin on your canvas. I'm working on a 10 by 10 canvas for this one, but really you can do any size you want. If you want to do a big huge one as a home decor in your house, you can just use bigger brushes to make things go easier, but basically it'll be all the same concepts and just adjust it to the size that you're going to work on. You can also do any shape pumpkin you want. I'm doing just kind of a standard typical size pumpkin. But if you want to make a big tall one or a really fat one, go for it. Um, I'm putting it pretty much in the center of this canvas so that way there's room for the trees to show behind it. If you feel more comfortable drawing it on paper first and then you want to transfer it onto your canvas, I'm going to attach a link right here to a quick tutorial on how to transfer a drawing onto your canvas that's quick and easy and hopefully helpful to those of you that don't feel as confident drawing directly onto the canvas. If you are drawing directly on the canvas, I just suggest drawing very lightly at first so you don't get a whole bunch of eraser marks and pencil smudges all over the place. So when I'm sketching, I always start with a softer pencil first. So with this one, I'm using a 6B pencil. And the B stands for blackness and basically softness of the lead. And then I will switch to an H pencil, like a 2H or a 4H, which is a harder lead that is not as easy to erase. So if you sketch it all out with a soft pencil first, work out all the details, get everything figured out, and then you can go over the final lines with the harder pencil and just make those lines very sharp and defined. Then you can take an eraser and go over the whole thing. It'll erase all the soft lines and leave behind the harder lines. So you just want to make sure that if you're going to push down really hard with that hard lead pencil that you're definitely sure that you have the design where you want it because it is much harder to erase. I kept changing my mind on how I wanted the stem to look so that's why you'll see a couple revisions here. So as always, we're going to use our three primary colors, yellow, magenta, primary blue, and white. We're going to bring black in later as well. So for our background, just grab any big brush. I'm using an extra large filbert brush. And we're going to make kind of a bluish lavender periwinkle sort of color. So take a big scoop of white, start with a little bit of blue and a little bit of magenta and just start mixing and try to match the shade I'm getting. We're going to be creating kind of a misty background, so it's going to be a, a cool, foggy evening, but we want to have a little bit of warmth to it, so that's why we're going to bring in a little bit of magenta to create a blue, but a teeny touch of lavender. And then just add a little bit of water to your paint to help it flow across the canvas easier. Leave a little section on the right side of the pumpkin. We're going to bring in some yellows and oranges on that far right side. And then the very bottom of the pumpkin, you don't need to worry about that either. We're going to paint that black. Now we're going to need to mix some more of the background color, so get really familiar with how you mix this color because we're going to be mixing this up quite a few more times. So again, it was a big scoop of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta, and a little bit more on the blue side. 
So you're going to see that I used a little bit of this to blend the left side of the pumpkin where the black stopped and just sort of blended it back up into the background. You don't even need to worry about this though because we're going to be putting a tree in that spot. So just skip this part. So grab your little small round brush next and we're going to create the look of some grass at the base of the pumpkin. So you're going to put a little bit of that background color on your little brush and it's going to work best if your black is still a little bit wet. So that way it'll mix and blend here and there and be a little more subtle in certain places and a little brighter in other places. And you're just creating little arches, crisscross, overlapping, just back and forth. The right side of this is going to have more of the yellow tones to it. It's reflecting the fire that is implied on the right side of the pumpkin. And then this left side is the reflection of the sky. Now we're going to mix a warm shade, take a scoop of yellow and just a little bit of white. We're going to blend some of the warmer tones into the right side of the pumpkin. So you can just smudge a little bit on there. Don't be too concerned about making it perfect. We just need some, some warmth on that side. So add a little bit of magenta as well. So you get kind of a, just a slightly orangey warm color. And we're just kind of smudging it into the right side and then just kind of crisscross your brush, flick it back and forth to fade it up into the periwinkle background color. If you need to add just a little bit of more white to it so it shows up better, you can do that. Or you can just wait for it to dry and then just add another layer. If it starts lifting, definitely let it dry and then you can go back in later and just add little bits back and forth. And the best way to feather something into another color as I'm dragging it up into the upper background is just barely, barely having any paint on your brush and just lightly flicking the brush back and forth in different directions. So clean off your brush and next we're going to start doing those background trees. So take a little bit of black and mix it into some of your periwinkle color, your background color. And we're just creating a few shades darker than the background color. So we're going to have a couple different shades. The trees that are in the foreground or behind the pumpkin but in the foreground, those are going to be darker. And then the trees behind that are going to be a few shades lighter. So it's going to create that depth and perspective. So now I'm taking my small angular brush and this one is going to be for painting our trees. So usually when I'm doing a background, I'll do what's furthest back first and then kind of build as it gets closer and closer. But I'm just going to do the, the larger trees that are in the background first, the ones that are closest to us, because um, it's such a small little background that I don't want to waste time creating a bunch of stuff in the far, far background and then covering it all up. So. Let's just go ahead and use the pure black and you could have a little bit of periwinkle on it if, if you want, but we're going to darken it up afterwards anyway. So just go ahead and dip your brush in the black, put a little bit of water on it so it's a little bit streaky. And we're just going to start creating some creepy, curvy, bendy trees. So you want them to be kind of knobby. And anytime you're creating a tree, you, the most important thing is you want to make sure it's thicker at the base. So this goes for branches as well. If you're going to add a branch onto, you know, growing out of the main trunk, 
you always want that branch, branch to be thicker at the base and then it'll get skinnier as it grows out longer. And then since I have a little bit of water in the paint, this is going to help create a streaky effect. So use the sharp pointy part of your brush to just drag it out and create some lines and given the implication of bark and texture. So again, here you can see where I'm adding a branch, it's going to be thicker as it's growing, whatever it's growing off of. You want it to be thicker at the base and then get skinnier and skinnier as it gets out towards the end. And then what I like to do when I do a bend, sometimes I'll add like just a little bumpy knob, almost like an elbow, and that just kind of makes it feel more realistic. And since these trees want them to be more of a spooky, creepy kind of tree, adding lots of curves and bends, and we're going to add lots of little skinny twigs just to make it a little bit more fun and creepy. So now we're going to create the trees that are in the distance. So you're going to mix up some of your background color and add a little bit of black to it so it's just a few shades darker than the background. Now you're going to switch to your small round brush and we're just going to start creating twisty, bendy trees in the background and start creating some of that depth. 
adding just a little bit of water to your paint will also help it be a little more flowy and much much easier to create those twisty bendy shapes Now if you want your forest to look even more dense and more depth and perspective being created, the trees that are directly behind the black ones are going to have a little, little bit of black in the background color. The ones behind that will have a little less black, the ones behind that will have a little less black, and so on and so on and so on. So the trees that are the furthest back will be the lightest. And as they get closer and closer and closer to the foreground, they're each going to get a little bit darker. So hopefully that makes sense. So you're welcome to add more layers. I only did really about one layer of trees. I just went a little bit darker with the, these trees I'm painting now, but you're welcome to add more and just don't add as much black in the next layer. Now what I'm doing is adding a little bit more pure black into the trees that are in the foreground. So this is also gonna push that background back further and creating more depth so these are in silhouette mostly but if you're just adding some streaks this is going to create some detail the trees in the background aren't going to have any detail those are just painted solid with that mix that you had just made but the ones in the foreground we're going to create a little bit of detail on them this is also where i'm going to start adding more twigs and little tiny branches to just add that creepy forest factor.
Now we're going to mix a warm color with yellow, a little bit of white, and a little bit of magenta. And we're going to start creating those highlights on the right side below the pumpkin. So you're going to use your little tiny round brush and do those little arched um, brush strokes to create that grassy look. Now let's warm it up a little bit more, bringing in a little magenta to create a little bit of an orange tone. Because you want a variety of lots of mixes of colors. So you're going to do some reddish, some orangish. If you get too much of this and you don't like where it's going, you can just paint a little black on top of it. And then just paint the oranges and yellows on top of that so they kind of blend into the black a little bit. All right, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> this happens to me on almost every single video. My camera shut off on me and it didn't make any noises, didn't alert me or anything, so you just missed a whole section. I think all you missed was me painting the pumpkin. So let me just catch you up, it, it's gonna be easy. So you're gonna mix a dark rust color, that's what color we're gonna paint the pumpkin, and then like a dark brownish color. So let me just go through and mix that with you. So you're going to take a scoop of yellow, a little scoop of magenta, so we're going to make a orange color, and then you're going to take a little bit of dark blue, or a little bit of primary blue. And we're just going to mix until you get a rusty orangey color. I'm going to need more yellow. mixing until you get like if you start with orange sometimes that'll be easier and then just add a little bit of blue to it but there's a nice rusty color right there and we're also going to make so that's going to be the color of the pumpkin the inside parts and then we want to do the line color so you're going to take a little bit of blue a little bit of magenta so you get a nice dark purple color and then you're going to take some of that rust color and mix it into it it's going to be like a warm purpley, like it's going to look kind of brownish but a little more on the purple side. So go ahead and paint the lines that are the little indents of the pumpkin. Do those with the dark color and then just paint all the other sections with that rust color that you made. And you'll probably have to do two layers because it's going to be kind of transparent with all that yellow in it. So go ahead and paint that and then I added a little more, I put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white and just kind of tap that into that lighter area just to brighten it up a little bit, a little brighter down here so it looks like maybe there's a fire glowing. And then I added just some more of these little arched, like little grassy things with that color. I'm trying to think if I did anything else. Oh, I added a few little bits. I'm sorry you missed all this. With my little tiny brush, that same color there, I just did a few little hints, like a few little streaks into some of the branches. So. Uh, if this is a glow down here, the light would be shining up on the bottom edges of some of these branches. So just kind of randomly on some of these bottom areas where that light would be hitting the bottom edge. Did a little bit there, just a little bit there, just a tiny bit, just to add a little more. I'm going to add a little more of a warmer shade in there so it's not quite so yellow. I'm going to take a teeny bit of magenta, that's not a teeny bit. Take some yellow and then a teeny bit of magenta. So you have kind of a warm orangey color. And just with barely any paint on my brush, just a little bit watered down, I'm just gonna do a little more yellow. Just a tiny, tiny hint of magenta. Just wanna warm this up a little bit so it looks like it's a warm glow from the fire. Kinda just tap a little bit here and there. Just barely, barely any paint on my brush. I'm just kind of feathering it in a little bit. 
And if you want to take a little bit of that, you can just tap. I'll do some of these again. So if you missed them, well, you did miss them. Just a few little bits, just on the bottom edges. Here and there. So you see a little glow shining up on those. Okay, so do that and then <laughs> catch up to me. The next step is gonna be taking your um, yellow and we're gonna paint the inside of the, uh, the mouth and the eyes with yellow. I'm going to tap a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just going to smudge in a little bit of white right I have a little bit of pencil line showing too so adding a little bit of this white in there is going to make it more opaque and it will cover up those pencil lines. My edge got a little bit messed up, so I'm going to take a little white and I'm just going to straighten up these edges. Well, the reason I'm using white is because the yellow will never cover up these dark rust colors. White is opaque and it's going to give us a nice fresh clean start so then we can paint the yellow on top of it. Let that dry. Let's work on this. This is still drying. So let's work on the stem. Well, let's take a scoop of yellow. Just do it right there. A little bit of blue. I'll make a green color, but that's clearly way too bright because this is a nighttime scene. So by taking a tiny bit of magenta, it's gonna dull it down. Take a little of that magenta there. And make like a dark olive green color. Yellow, tiny more blue. Whoa, that was way too much. Take more yellow, tiny bit of magenta. Okay, let's see. It's still pretty light, but let's just
blue, a little magenta. We're gonna make like a dark purple and then takes, mix it into some of that green. It's kind of like a dark color. Let's bring that around the base there. Drag it along the left side. Just mix as we go. I'm just gonna add some skinny little streaks in there. Clean off the brush. Let's take a yellow and a tiny bit of magenta. Make a really warm yellowy orange shade. Some streaks. Take a little bit of white because it's not showing up very well. And let's just add some streaks onto that right side of the stem. dark color I'm mixing a little bit of the green into it so it's kind of in between that dark shade and the green shade. Bit of white, tap a little bit of white on this right side down here. I'm just gonna blend it. 
So it looks like there's a light shining from within. wait till this dries, the yellow dries first. I'm work on the pumpkin some more. So if you need to do a second layer on your pumpkin, make sure it's nice and solid. in your mouth. Just have a few areas where I need it a little more solid. Now we're going to get a little bit brighter. So let's take a scoop of yellow and a little bit of magenta. We're going to make a bright orange. And we're going to go on where the dark line is here. We're going to add a little highlight on the left side of it. little bit. I'm going to fade it out. So on the right side, so the lines here on the other side of it, to the left of the line, I'm just going to add a little bit right next to it. I don't want this to be too bright yet. We're gonna keep this subtle. Take a little bit right on the top bump. Right here.
And then let's take a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. I'm just going to add a little tiny swipe on the right edge. I'm using the pointy part. dry a little. We're going to take um, a little scoop of yellow, a little bit of magenta, mix a orangey shade, a light orangey shade like that. I'm using a number two, number eight filbert, small filbert brush. And I'm doing the inside edge here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that light yellow or more orange. I mean.
Take a little bit of that darker color. Make that just a little bit darker. And draw a little angle. Right there. A little bit of shading. Right up that side. Do the same thing. Take a little bit of that dark pumpkin color. Mix it into that orange. Let's do a little bit right in the crease. And have it fade up. Same thing here. Just angle that little edge there. Darker shade, get a little darker right up there in the crease and just kind of blend it out. And take a little bit of their bright orange color. A little bit of white. Get just a little bit bright and fade it out. Right along that, where the dark edge was, if you get bright right along that edge, it'll make that dark stand out. Let's put a tiny bit more white. So right where this dark edge is, right up next to it, you get a little brighter, just right along the edge, and kind of fade it out. You don't have to brighten up the whole thing, it'll just make that edge appear a little darker. Same thing if you get a little brighter right along the edge of this will make this look darker. If you get brighter right along the edge. Get just a little darker.
now I'm just going to mix up some more of that pumpkin dark rust color and touching up a few areas where I saw a few little mess ups. So now we're going to mix up the dark color that we did for all the stripes, all the creases in the pumpkin. So you're going to take a purple mix and add a little bit of rust to it and you're just going to do some really sharp lines and you want to make sure the edge of the line is sharp. The area where we did the highlight was to the left of each stripe. So that edge you want to be really, really, really sharp and then to the right we're going to fade that dark color into the right side of that stripe. So now I'm taking my number eight filbert brush and I'm blending that dark stripe out to the right side to fade it out so it doesn't look like so much like a stripe. So on the right side of the pumpkin, I'm fading it towards the right of the stripe. And as you can see on the left side of the pumpkin here, I'm fading it to the left of the stripe. Okay, now we're going to go in and brighten up the pumpkin with some highlights. We're going to mix up an orange shade, so take a scoop of yellow and a little bit of magenta to make a nice bright orange. And we're going to just swipe it. I'm using my number 8 filbert brush. Any small brush will do. Just not a tiny one. You want it to be kind of wide. And towards the right side of each hump of each section of the pumpkin, we're just going to do a few swipes to brighten it up, keeping it towards the top to start with. And then we're going to take a little more yellow and go on top of that and brighten it up with another layer. And you want to be careful just to keep these highlights kind of in the center of each one of those sections of pumpkin because you don't want to cover up the darker edges and lose all that shading you had. And when you add the next layer, the brighter with a little bit of yellow, you just want a tiny bit of paint on your brush so it'll be easier to fade it out. And again, keeping that towards the top hump so the light is hitting the top of the pumpkin and just right down the center of each one of those sections. Very lightly, very light touch, blend it in really softly. And you want to keep these highlights towards the top half of the pumpkin mainly. The darker 
bottom half of the pumpkin is going to have some more shadow in it, so don't bother adding a lot of highlights to the bottom part. You can do just a little bit on the edges towards the bottom where the light might be hitting just that little bump, but um, keep it real subtle for the bottom section. And if you use just the tip of the brush, you can create some streaks and stripes to create a little more texture on the pumpkin. Again, keep this all very subtle. We don't want to get too, too bright because we want overall the pumpkin to stay a little bit darker so it looks like it's in shadow and those lights glowing out of his face are much brighter. Now we're going to add just a tiny bit more white into the right corner of the mouth and the right corners of the eyes just to create that little bit of extra glow. And fade it out into the yellow. You don't want it to be all white. You want to keep it overall yellow, just a touch of that white in the corners. Now we're going to brighten up the stem. So we're going to take some yellow, teeny bit of magenta to make a nice bright, bright yellowy orange. And we're just going to use our little tiny brush and add some streaks to the right half of that stem so that light from the fire to the right is really shining bright on the edge of that stem. And then add a little bit more white to your mix and we're going to brighten up a few of those highlights so you have several shades of highlight. Then you're going to mix up some yellow and white, keeping it more yellow than white, but you want this fairly light. We're going to add some little streaks and highlights to give the pumpkin a little more brightness and a little more texture. We're just going to create some, some lines all over where all the brightest parts of the pumpkin are. I started using my tiny round brush, but then I decided I wanted to switch to my angular and use the pointy part of the angular because you can get some really nice skinny little lines and streaks with that brush.
Now we're going to mix up a little bit of that background color and create some reflections from the sky on the left side of the pumpkin. So if you remember, we used some white, some blue, and some magenta to make that purpley blue periwinkle shade. So mix a little bit of that up and we're going to do the same technique, adding some streaks and we're going to do it on the left side of the pumpkin. I'm going back in and taking some black and darkening up the bottom edge around the pumpkin a little bit more to create a little bit more of a shadow below the pumpkin. Then I added just a little bit of blue into the black mix so it wasn't just so flat and black. Adding just a touch of blue will bring in some of that sky color as well. Now so much of that grassy look got covered up, I'm going to take a little bit more of that periwinkle shade that we did in our sky and I'm going to bring in a few more layers of that grassy look below the pumpkin. Now you want to do the same thing on the right side of the pumpkin, add some more highlights, some warm yellows and warm oranges just to give it a lot more mix of different colors.
So I'm going in on the right side behind the tree now and warming this up a little bit. I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow and magenta to bring in a little more orange right at the base so it appears that there's a fire burning behind the tree. And then you can also add little bits of white so you want to mix up some oranges, some whites, and some yellows just to give it a very glowy effect. Now I'm just going to touch up random areas where I feel like it needs just a little more highlight and glow. Now we're going to mix up a shadow color of uh, purple. Take a scoop of blue and a little bit of magenta and we're going to blend this into all the dark parts of the pumpkin. And you want to make sure you water this down quite a bit so it's just a very transparent layer and it doesn't get too thick and cover up all of the work that you did. By doing this very, very thin layer, you can go right over the top of some of these highlights and they're still going to show through. So it just keeps it real subtle. And the reason I'm doing a purple shade is it just really brightens up your painting and gives it a whole nother layer of color and it's not so dead. You never want to use like a dark gray or just black watered down because that's really going to flatten your painting out. By doing a purple shade, it just gives it a whole lot more life and I just think it makes it more interesting. Once you do that first layer with that watered down, then you can take a dry brush and just feather it out just to really fade it into the color of the pumpkin. And you want to go into all these little dark, deep creases where all the stripes of the pumpkin are. Use the very tip of your angle brush, that one's perfect, and just get right deep in there and then feather it out.
Now you'll need to look back and see if you covered up too many of the highlights. You might need to go back in and touch up a few little bright spots. Keep this real subtle though. You want an overall dark with just little bits of highlights here and there. And the very last step here is to take some white and yellow. You want this really bright. Take your little tiny round brush and just add one little edge along the mouth and the eyes just to brighten up that edge and also make that darker side appear even darker. So the artist that I'm featuring today is Narishka. This beautiful lady here created my crashing wave tutorial and my seashell and they came out so incredible. I am so excited when you guys send me these. This one is just absolutely beautiful. And she has the cutest dog ever. So I hope you will continue to keep painting with me and send me your pics. So in honor of Halloween, I thought I would share this really funny photo with you guys. Our dog poet found a jack-o'-lantern and stuck his head in it. He did this about five or six times and ran all around the yard having a ball. Uh, we did cut holes in it so he was not harmed, he could breathe. Eventually we did throw it away because we didn't want to get stuck on him forever. But I have to say he is the strangest and most entertaining dog I've ever had. <laughs> poet. 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 What are you doing? <laughs> He's so... Poet! He's so disappointed in himself. Come here! Poet, come here! Poet! He's paralyzed! <laughs>